So we're going to move out of proportion land. We're going to talk about mean land. You ready to go out of proportion land? So in proportion land, you know one thing. You know Z, right? Proportions all deal with Z. So if you hear about a proportion and you're testing a claim or you're doing a confidence interval about proportions, what are you going to use? All right. That's that Z table that we, we had, the standard normal curve. Now, in 8.4, well, we're not dealing with proportions anymore. It's going to be real similar to what we had in Chapter 7, where we have means, but we have two different scenarios. Either you know the standard deviation for the population, or you don't. So we're going to talk right now, testing a claim about a mean, when our sigma, or our standard deviation for the population, is no. Testing a claim about population mean where our sigma is known. <clears throat> well, we got a couple requirements. First thing we need, of course, is uh, what's, what's the first thing always that we've had the last, like, certain yeah, things? Sample. What type of sample? Yeah. Random sample. In order to use this section, this is the big one really, you got to know this. You got to know that your sigma is known. Lastly, there was also a magic number that, that we used to deal with a, a z value. Magic number for our n. What's our n stand for? Sample size, good. It was number of trials or sample size for proportions, right? Here it's just sample size. Uh, what does n have to be? Greater than 30. So 31 or more. So greater than 30. Was that necessarily, did that necessarily have to be there no matter what? What was the other thing that we could have if n wasn't greater than 30? Yeah, or the population is normally distributed. Let's go back to the central limit theorem, chapter 6, where we learned about that stuff. Now, if we're not talking about proportions anymore, well, the method for hypothesis testing is still the same. Just like when you do a different experiment in science, you still have the same scientific method, right? That doesn't change. Same thing with the process for hypothesis testing. That, that's not going to change. What does change is your, your set of conditions for a scientific test, or in our case, our test statistic. That's the thing that changes here. So, of course, we, we can't have any p-hat, right? Explain to me why we can't have a p-hat here if we're talking about means. What's p-hat stand for? Proportion, right? So if we're not talking about proportions, you're not going to have a p-hat. What are we going to have if we're talking about means? What letters are we going to have? <laughs> we're going to have a mu. For sure. What's mu stand for? Mean. What type of mean? Okay, what else are we going to have? X-bar. What's X-bar stand for? That's going to be our evidence, right? That we're going to try to overturn a statement about mu with. So our H sub 0 is going to have a mu in there. Our sample is going to have an X-bar in there. We're going to compare those two things with a Z test statistic. Why can we use a Z test statistic again? Say, say that again? Sure, we have sigma right in the formula. So our test statistic that we're going to use is the one we know and love or fear and dread, depending on whether you got it right or wrong the last test, right? It's, uh, it's this one. <coughs> That's your sample mean. You're comparing it to a stated claim. That's your mu. It's something about a population parameter. And this gives the number of standard deviations away from the mean you have, where you have a sigma. Oh, that's why we got to know sigma to use a z value, because that's right, it's built into your formula. So if you didn't know this, you couldn't do this. If you didn't know this, what would you use? 
T. T, and there'd be a little s here. Right, it stands for the same thing, right? It's, well, not the same thing. It stands for standardization. It just depends on whether you're talking about a population or a, a sample. Over the square root of n. Now, i got to warn you, a lot of you on your last test had trouble doing this on a calculator. You plugged in the, all the numbers correctly. You had trouble doing, doing the math, right? When you're doing these problems, calculate your subtraction first. Write it down. Calculate this. Do sigma divided by the square root of n. Store that in your calculator. You can't round it and then divide this by that. That's how you do this operation. Or, or if, you, if you really understand the math about this, you do this subtraction first, multiply by the square root of n, and then divide by your sigma. It's the same thing. Does that make sense? Flip, multiply, you got it. So I think I did that right. <laughs> Hang on. Let me make sure before I say something and then I'm wrong about it. As usual, I mean, you know, <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah, you, that, that's one other way you could do it. Just You can't divide and then divide. That would, that would make your z-score a, a lot larger or a lot smaller, depending on what numbers you have there. You with me? Hope you're with me. Fancy math, fancy fractions, I know. The stats, why are we doing fractions in here? Uh, the other thing you got to know is that our steps are going to be identical to the last section, so I really don't have a lot of legwork to cover with you. That's why we spent so long in 8.2 getting all this done. All we have to do now is do a couple examples, illustrate for you that there's til still two ways to do this, p-value method or traditional. I'll show you both with this one example, and then we're, we're pretty much good to go. So let's try, let's try this example. We're talking about m and Do you guys like M&Ms? Do you know they're very specific on what an M&M is? An M&M for them has to be a piece of chocolate coated with candy that weighs 0.8635 grams. Did you know that? If they're less than that, they can't put the little M on it. They sell them in bulk to, I don't know, China or something? Uh, put a little lead in there just to pay them back for all the lead they give us. Up, give us. <laughs> Forget those guys. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but anyway, they, they can't sell them as M&Ms. So I don't know what they do with them. They probably melt them down and make more M&Ms. So here's this guy's job. This guy's job is to sample M&Ms And what he does, he goes to the line and he'll pull off. You can, obviously, you can't weigh every M&M. Do you know how many millions of M&Ms they make probably every second? You're not going to sample every one of those, right? It's, it's, it's impossible. So what they do is they, they pull out samples of them. They go, okay, here's 465 M&Ms. Let's weigh each of these individually and see if we're on the money. If we're not, well, then we've got to redo this one machine because they're making too small, uh, small pieces of chocolate. We want them bigger. Or if they're too big, uh, we, we want to make them smaller. Generally, they want to make them at least large enough, right? Because then people don't get mad. People are always okay if you're like, oh, hey, that's an M&M. &M. <laughs> Not bad, right? But if you give them like, a little bitty M&M, like, what the heck? I have like five M&Ms and they would, they would be happy. So we're going to say that this guy's sampling, and you're the guy, 465 M&Ms. The sample had a mean of Point eight six three five. Oh, you know what? That was a sample. I meant to say that the the M and M's are supposed to be point eight five three five. Had a sample mean of point eight six three five. Now, throughout the course of M and M's production, they have a pretty good idea of what their standard deviation is. So right now, we're going to say that the standard deviation for the population is point zero five six five grams. So they're assuming that that's their typical standard deviation for all M&Ms that are produced. That's the population right there. What we're going to do is test the claim 
that the mean weight is greater than point eight five three five. So they're giving away too much chocolate. We're going to test that claim. Claim. That's the requirement for labeling. If it's too big, they can't call it M&M. If it's too small, they can't call it M&M. Again, you're not going to see an M&M this big around, right? So you get your bag full of all these little ones, and then this big one that'd be kind of cool. Like, oh, I like this hockey puck of chocolate. I mean, that's fantastic. But it's, it's not going to happen because they wouldn't call it M&M. So here's, here's the idea. Here's what's happening. You go, you sample your 465 M&Ms. You go and weigh them. He said, okay, the, the average, average weight for these guys is 0.8635 grams. You, you get the picture? So each one of those weighs 0.8635 grams. The st population standard deviation, this is what you're taking for granted here, is that you have 0 0.0565 grams in standard deviation. Test the claim that the mean weight is greater than 0.8535. Firstly, I want you to check requirements. We're going to assume that the sample is random. Secondly, do we have... Sigma anywhere? Where is it? So what's it say for sigma? What's it, what's it say? How can you determine that you have sigma up here? Oh, that word right there, population. If that word was not here, look at the board real quick. If that word wasn't there, population, segregation, could you use this? You couldn't use it. We'd be in the next section, not there yet. So, of course, we're using a Z. But if this was not there, you could not use a Z test statistic. Are you all very clear on that? That was the problem with chapter 7 as well. Same exact concept. Also, our, our third condition, is that met? Yes. Now, it doesn't say anything about the population being normally distributed, but does that matter? No. No, what's our sample size? Way more. Way more than enough. That's perfect. So we have our, all our conditions met to use a Z test statistic. That's what you got to check. Because on your problem, on your test, I'm not going to say, this problem is from 8.4. And you go, oh, 8.4, that's a Z. No, no, no. It's just going to have this on the board, right? Just like that, with a problem right next to it that reads almost identical, except that that is a sample instead of a population. And you got to know the difference. And you're going to have perhaps a different outcome. So the, the, these people, they, they did a sample, they're, they're trying to check if this machine is producing M&Ms that are too big. Because they don't want to give away too much chocolate, they want everything to be just precise so you get exactly what you expect in your bag of chocolate. Does that make sense? So we're, we're going to be precise on this thing and make sure that we are, are testing the claim that, well, that, that this thing's greater than that. Now, now here's the problem. Is this more than that? Yeah. Clearly, this particular sample has weights that are more than the normal. Do you understand? However, what we're saying is maybe this happens because of random chance of sampling. Maybe you just happen to get all 465 M&Ms that were just slightly more than normal. You with me? So what we're, what we're doing by testing this with a significance level, uh, which I haven't given you yet, we're, we're testing this against a significance level to see that if that, that's rare enough to say this can't just be random chance, this is way too rare, this for sure we're, we're making a mistake on our, our production line. Do you guys see the difference in, in that? Sure, yeah, that's more. This is